Hello. Today we are going to talk about fibroid tumors. According to the Illinois Department of Public Health, as many as 77% of childbearing women could have fibroid tumors and not even know it. Well, I was one of those women. At 41, I became pregnant with my daughter Mecca, and before I even went to the doctor, I knew something was off. I was only a few days late with my cycle, and I looked like I was three months pregnant. Turns out, I had a couple of large fibroid tumors, one at the base of my uterus. Now, this fibroid was probably already the size of a grapefruit, so I was sticking out, and I looked rather big for just being newly pregnant. And so the prognosis for me was pretty dire. I would be bedridden for most of the pregnancy, Mecca would be born three months premature, and I would have a cesarean section. Now, I did have a C-section, but I was never bedridden, as a matter of fact, I worked part-time up until the weekend Mecca was born, and I carried her full term. Now, how did I do this? I created a partnership with my daughter, with my unborn daughter, to have a healthy and successful pregnancy. Now, I'm not saying this was an easy process. I'm not saying I wasn't scared. I mean, every time I went to the doctor, they would tell me something else was wrong or something could happen. And it would be stuff like, you know, the fibroids are so large they could interfere with the growth of your baby. Um, you know, you, you would, one, at one point they actually couldn't even find her heartbeat because she had nestled herself in between the fibroids. So her heartbeat wasn't where it normally should have been. And so they couldn't find her heartbeat. And that was, you know, yet another thing to be afraid about. But what I ended up doing and... I didn't even know this was possible at the time. I ended up developing two-way communication with her. And so this all started from a simple question from my husband. We were in Las Vegas and we were scheduled to, we were at a conference and we were scheduled to come home on Monday. But what he didn't tell me was that he had checked us out of our room and we were gonna stay in a room with his single friend. Now I'm pregnant, I'm uncomfortable and I really didn't wanna be around a lot of people I really didn't want to spend the night with a single guy. So I said, well, I'm going to go home. We lived in Los Angeles at the time. I said, I'm going to catch a ride and go home. And he asked me, did you ask Mecca what she wanted to do? And so I'm thinking, well, why would I need to ask her? He's like, well, did you ask Mecca what she wanted to do? And at this time, I was about three months pregnant. So I went into meditation. And I said, Mecca, do you want to stay in Vegas with Daddy? Or do you want to come home with me? And she very clearly said, I want to stay in Vegas with my daddy. Now, this was not the answer that I wanted because I had my own agenda. I wanted to go home. So I said, Mecca, are you sure you want to stay in Vegas or do you want to come home with me? I want to stay in Vegas with my daddy. So that was the first time I had intuitive two-way communication with my daughter, Mecca. And so I say intuitive because the conversation was not like you're hearing me now. It was a voice that I heard in my head. And so when I teach women how to have intuitive two-way communication, you can hear a voice. You can see colors or pictures or sounds, or you can feel something. And so in, when you're using your intuition, there's no right or wrong way to do it. And so it's very exciting. And you know what? Let me back up. My name is Sandra Jones Keller, and I'm the Intuitive Pregnancy Coach with the CCFL Global Academy. As you can tell, I get very excited about this information. So I teach new moms, pregnant moms, and wannabe moms how to develop two-way communication with their unborn and newborn babies. And this was a life-saving process for me because once I identified her voice, then whenever I went to the doctor, whatever they told me and they said was going to happen, I would go home. I cried a lot during this journey, but I would go home and I would ground myself and I would meditate. And I would tune in with her. I would ask, Mecca, how are you doing? And each time it was like, Mom, I'm fine. You take care of yourself. So somehow she had literally carved a space out and she was hanging out. So because I knew she was fine, I then could use all my energy 
to keep myself well, to keep myself grounded. So even though the prognosis for me was pretty dire, you know, the doctors only know what they know based on history and based on what they've seen. But what they didn't know that I was working on, I was working on a higher source. I call it God. Um, you can call it Buddha, Krishna, Yahweh, Jesus, Christ, Mary. But I was working with the universal power of the universe. And so I was calling in this energy. I was doing my spiritual mind treatments. I was meditating. I was grounding. But most of all, I was communicating with my daughter, Mecca. And so when you communicate with your unborn children, this adds an unprecedented level of comfort and security for you. Because you know, like I knew, that I was doing exactly what I needed to best take care of myself and my baby. And how do I know that? Because I asked Mecca each time, Mecca, what do you need? How, do you like exercise? Do you like my diet? Do you, how do you feel? And I would tune in and I would listen. And I literally felt like she pulled me through this pregnancy. Now, I'm not saying this was easy, but I'm saying that it's possible. So for women out there who have fibroids or who have been told that you can't get pregnant because you have fibroids, I wasn't on any fertility drugs. I went in. I didn't even, you know, know that I had the fibroids, and I was pregnant. That was one thing the doctors asked me. Well, were you on fertility drugs? Because you should not be pregnant based on the size and the location of your fibroids. But I was pregnant because Mecca wanted to come through me. It was a divine agreement that we had as a family. And so regardless of the physical symptoms and regardless of what was going on in my body, this was a spiritual contract. And that superseded all of the physical things that were going on because she wanted to come in. It was an agreement for her to come in and she came in and she's magnificent. And so I'm doing this video just to share my story to know that it is possible. It's possible to conceive over 40. I was 41. It's possible to conceive with fibroids. And it's possible to have a healthy and successful pregnancy with the fibroids and with everything that's going on. You got to keep yourself grounded. You need to take care of yourself. And you need to go in. You need to communicate with your body and create a partnership with your body because it is in partnership with you. It wants you to have a successful and healthy pregnancy. So create a partnership with your body and find out what your body needs because everybody's different. Some people may need exercise. Some people may not. Some people may need bed, to be bedridden. Some people may not. But I knew I didn't need to be bedridden because I asked my daughter and I asked my body. And there were times when I was extremely tired, and I was I was huge. Let's see, how did one of my friends say it? She said, I was disturbingly large. So by the end, I was like out to here because I had the fibroid. And, but I was still walking around. Now, I had to rest a lot, and there was a couple times I went to the grocery store, and I did have to use the little cart because it was just hard to walk. But like I said, I was never bedridden. And for the most part, I was able to maneuver through this with, with a lot of grace. I mean, I didn't think I was very graceful at the time, but you know, the feedback that I have received from people is like they can't believe that I did what I did. And so like I said, it wasn't easy, but it was something that I was committed to doing. I was committed to not having my daughter be born three months premature. And they said she would be three months premature because at that time my uterus was already big and it could only stretch so much. And so there was no way that I could carry her full term based on the size of my uterus. Well, I did. And so, like I said, I'm sharing this just to share my story. So if you know someone with fibroids, if you know someone who's pregnant with fibroids, and if you know someone who's trying to conceive with fibroids, please share this information. I can be found at sandrajoneskeller.com. Visit my website. I have my top 10 tips for developing in two-way intuitive communication with the unborn, newborn baby. It's a free downloadable file. So like the video, share it. Until next time, bye-bye.